Hey guys, before we dive into this video talking all things manual Akanji, I want to say right now, download one football and click that link in the description below. You can get all the updates on every team, every player, and every goal from across the world of football. So what are you waiting for? It helps support my channel too, and it's absolutely wonderful. And it doesn't cost absolutely anything at all. It's absolutely free. And over 10 million people have downloaded one football already. So what are you waiting for? If you want all the stats as well and the information about our latest signing, Manuel Akanji, over at Dortmund, It'll all be there. So what are you waiting for? Go and do it right now. Click the link in the description below. Help support my channel and get yourself one of the best apps on the market. Do it right now. Over to the video. Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, Manchester City yesterday sort of broke City Twitter and the internet when it broke that Man City are going to sign Dortmund defender uh, Manuel Akanji basically out of nowhere. And it's understandable if, if a lot of you have been watching this thinking like, well, well, I don't really know too much about him. We know about Dortmund, but we've not really watched Akanji in detail because well, I haven't. I'm not going to pretend to sit here and watch, say, I watch the Bundesliga every week. I just don't. But this gentleman alongside me uh, randomly slid into my DMs, which was really really useful actually Oliver <laughs> and said would you like to chat about uh, Akanji because I know a thing or two about this guy and this is Oliver Zessica. Oliver uh, thank you so much for coming on the channel mate it's really appreciated Thanks for uh, letting me put you under pressure to put me on. <laughs> no pressure at all. You you literally made my, my life easier, honestly. I was thinking, I need someone to talk to. But then when Oliver messaged me, Oliver is literally Switzerland co-head researcher for Football Manager. So you work for Football Manager. Well, how long have you been doing that for? Oh, uh, since 20, yeah, 2009, I believe. I, I first started and I'm the head researcher uh, or chief scout for Switzerland since 2016. Okay, so what every year do you have to provide updates on all, all the Swiss players? Is it from the league or is it just Swiss players full stop? Uh, no, it's it's for the league. But nowadays we also take an eye uh, or take a look at the Swiss players because their their games are readily available most of the times because they play in bigger leagues. And uh, yeah, of course. yeah, we do we do give input on Swiss national team players as well. How much work goes into this? I'm curious because I've always wondered because football manager Oof. is such a global phenomenon. Like, do you put an awful? Is it is it close to a full time job for you, or is it is it? Something you it do? is not. It no. is not a full time job. It spreads out in summer over five months. So, and we we work on like five thousand players for Switzerland, and I have a team of twenty assistants and another head, uh, head researcher who takes care of the lower leagues. So it is a lot of work, but it goes well with my daytime job, which is a football scout. Out, so oh, okay. uh, I can save some time there. Are you a freelance scout then as well? I am. I am. Amazing. So essentially, this is something that you care an awful lot about: football scouting <laughs> and then football manager. Like, yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. Football manager. We, we, pretty much everyone watching this channel at some point has been consumed by football manager. I can't go near it anymore because I lose my life. Literally, I just can't go near it. Like, it just it takes up too much of my time and get addicted. But Oliver, obviously, you're very well placed to talk about this guy. So. Uh, immediately, um, we'll go talk about the, the circumstances that uh, have led to Kanji basically all but signing for Manchester City. Apparently, he's doing his medical today, so it's definitely going to happen. It's almost certainly going to happen. Um, how come he's leaving Dortmund, as far as you're aware? As far as I'm aware, he w didn't want to extend his contract. He wanted a bigger contract, and Dortmund didn't want to give it to him. And so he basically sat on the sidelines for most of uh, preseason. And uh, he was playing a bit of game of poker to see where he could land. And by the looks of it, right now he's winning because Manchester City is a big club and uh, his salary will probably almost double than what he had in Dortmund. And yeah, he basically told them that he don't, doesn't want to extend the contract unless it's a very big offer. So that's the uh, point. And Dortmund deemed uh, his... Uh, uh, his, his demands uh, not worthy enough of the player, it seems. So he was uh, he sat on the sideline for most of uh, preseason. That seems fair enough. I mean, I guess it's one of those things where is it fair to say that if he wasn't looking to leave, he'd still be part of the Dortmund team playing regularly? Yes, uh, sure, yeah, sure. But the uh, problem is more his contract runs out next year. So yeah. uh, if Dortmund uh, didn't want to play him. 
if they want to sell him now and not uh, leave on a free at yeah. the end of the season. But if he had a longer contract, then he would still be a regular at Dortmund. Okay. And how has his time been at Dortmund? I mean, the reputation online and obviously the internet says a lot of things, but <laughs> the reputation online is someone of a talented player who had an awful lot of promise when he signed for Dortmund. It's had ups and downs, you know, some moments of brilliance and some moments of, you know, basic mistakes. And is that a, mm-hmm. a relatively fair quick summation? I mean, how, how much of us- that's a very fair uh, assess, assess, assessment of his time in Dortmund, I believe. Um, he had some minor injury problems during his time. He had some problems with his uh, partners in the back four. He's He himself is a little bit of error prone at times, like concentration issues, not seeing uh, an opponent in his back and so, and so forth. Um, yeah, I think... He could have done better, but he was still a very good player. Um, he was still contributing a lot to Dortmund's, uh, well, can you say success? Because their goal was always to win a championship, but they didn't. But he was still contributing a lot to uh, Dortmund's play um, because he's very good on the ball. Yeah. So um, it's. if I gave it a grade, I would give it a 6.5 out of 10. Okay. So pretty decent, not great, and yeah, yeah. not not terrible, but decent at the same time. And um, I mean, what? Like, so if, if basically, if people have never really seen a country before as a footballer, how would you describe his overall game? You know, like what kind of centre back is he? Is, is there any comparisons? A lot of people don't like comparisons, but some people do. Who does he like? How does he play as a footballer? What's his style as a centre back? I don't like comparisons either. Um, He is a relatively tall player. He's athletic. He's very fast, uh, but lacks a bit of acceleration with his first two or three steps. He needs some time to get on high speeds, but he's able to catch up with with quick strikers uh, relatively easily. Uh, He is a modern centre-back, so he plays a lot with the ball. He runs into midfield. I just saw a statistic today that he is uh, on second only behind Diot Upamecano in Bundesliga last season in uh, progressive runs per 90. And uh, he's also a very good ball player. He can play passes over multiple lines. He can play the long balls, the diagonal ball. He can play the short ball. He's vertically oriented. And uh, in terms of defending, he's a good tackler. Where... He has some weak points, and that's a his aerial game. For his athletic, athleticity, I would expect him to be a little bit uh, of a higher jumper and a little bit better in uh, in heading. And as I said, some concentration issues from time to time, where he just forgets about his his uh, man, or uh, where he just has a concentration lapse. But overall, he's a very good player. Okay, that's interesting. So the pace, one, the pace is an interesting one for me um, because obviously City's collection of centre backs, um, it's Stones, Diaz, Laporte, Ake. I wouldn't say any of them are, are you know very fast. The, the one or two mm-hmm. of them have a decent turn of pace. Um, is he probably faster than them on average? Would you say? On average, I would say I would say he's one of the fastest uh, defenders in the top five leagues at the That's moment. Really I don't know I don't know every defender, obviously, yeah, but course, uh, yeah. he is uh, among the fastest. So uh, yeah, I would say he's yeah. yeah yeah. That's great to hear because obviously in City's back line, it's only obviously Kyle Walker is a super, you know super fast, but he's the only real fast defender Man City have got. Laporte has a decent turn of pace when he gets going, but we probably lack a little bit of pace at the back line and. So is 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 ball playing then? Um, obviously, that's something that Guardiola is going to be drawn to massively. You know, um, we're aware that he's probably becoming in as a relative option given City's injuries and all that kind of stuff. But um, mm-hmm. you, you, City aren't going to sign a player without talent. Full stop. You know, I mean, obviously, he has to have that there. Um, what you know, what kind of passer is he? You know, is he um, uh, is he the kind of person that will you know break the line so to speak and look to play in those kind of you know you know when defenders. Like Laporte's quite good at this, where they're quite aggressive with the passing, and they really like they they drill it past two or three lines of you know the opposition. Is he that kind of person? Would he play like the lofted uh, diagonals and all that kind of stuff as well? He's not as aggressive as uh, Laporte. Um, he does play sometimes. He does pick his uh, passes over multiple lines, but he's more like a short passer, um, like a direct pass into the central midfield or onto the wings. Yeah. Uh, he's able to play the diagonal ball, no problem. 
And uh, I think overall he's a li little bit more um, cautious with his passing than Laporte. So he's not a risk, a high risk taker with his passes. Okay. That's, I mean, neither is Diaz, you know, or Ake, and they've been absolutely fine for Man City as well. No. The, the fact that he dribbles with the ball a little bit, not dribbles, but he carries it, it's interesting because it's only really Stones has a little bit of that to his game at Man City, but Ake and Diaz are definitely a little bit more conservative on that side. Um, which side of the centre back pairing does he prefer to play on usually? Because obviously we've got left sided and right sided and so on yeah yeah he does play preferably on the right side he's naturally right-footed although he has a decent left foot as well so he could play uh, from time to time on the left side okay and has he got any form of playing at right back at any point in his career because man City <laughs> do tend to do that you know like you know what pep's like pep's like you there you're a forward you, you're now a defender you're, you're a wing like can he cover potentially at the right uh, yeah, I think so. He has rarely played on the right, but he has the speed to do it. Uh, it would just be like a little bit of a waste of time. Although he does go forward, as the stats prove, uh, he does not go into the opposition area. Although, uh, with, with obviously with corners and uh, with also set pieces in general, he does go forward. But uh, during play, uh, he does not go into the opposition area. So he might be a little bit restrained playing on the right. I've got a theory here, and you don't. You could you could tell me I'm talking nonsense if you want to, Oliver. But basically, mm -hmm. Man City, like the way Kyle Walker plays for City, he doesn't as a fullback. He doesn't really get forward very often. He's the one that sits a little bit deeper, you know. And Cancelo is given that free roam to go forward and create. Um, given the fact that often when City have the ball, we tend to play free at the back, you know, because um, Cancelo will bomb forward and Walker will tuck in a little bit, you know, usually alongside Rodri or whatever. But it becomes a sort of free at the back, and we saw that against Palace in particular. Is it possible that Kanji would be suitable in that take on role, you know, like that Walker, where he, he tucks in a little bit and good turn of pace as well, obviously naturally a centre back? Could he potentially do something similar for Man City? Uh, I think so. He's not used to it. Although Swiss uh, Switzerland has played uh, under his, their former coach, they have played with a uh, uh, similar system. Although there was the uh, left back uh, tucking into a centre back role when in possession. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think he could play that, and with that, you would basically he would basically cover two positions. And uh, I think if you look at the you reported price and everything, he's still relatively young at age twenty six. Um, then you could say that you've covered or you've uh, hit two birds with one stone with uh, with him. Yeah. Um, what about his overall temperament as a footballer? Like, you know, like, um, do you know much about his reputation? Uh, you know, is he, is he, you know, is he, is he quite calm? Is he quite aggressive on the pitch? Is he much of a team player? Does he have leadership qualities or anything like that? He does have leadership qualities. Qualities. He has to because he's among the leaders in the Swiss national team. Uh, which showed last season at the Euros where he had a, an outstanding tournament and was one of the leaders on the pitch. He is generally soft-spoken and calm. He's a very intelligent footballer. Okay. I fully expect, uh, I, I fully expect to, uh, or when I say footballer, I mean a very intelligent person. Yeah. And I fully expect to uh, the video of him uh, doing maths in his head while a guy calculates on a calculator is resurfacing soon. Oh, you is, will that, see. is that a thing? I'll yeah. When, that. when when you when you when you see it, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to say uh, a kanji. I'm yeah, gonna... a kanji calculations, and then you. You can uh, resurface oh, so, it. Oh, yourself. yeah, sorry, he's faster than a calculator. Apparently, he's, uh, yeah. that's interesting. So, he's another intelligent footballer because Man City try and make a habit of signing them. So, that's interesting. Yeah. And, yeah, in general, there is there are no or very few disciplinary issues, issues known with him. He's actually, um, as I said, soft spoken and integrates very well into a team. That's good because obviously there's, there's a chance at Man City, like as with as is with any single player, that he could be sat on the bench a little bit because we have such a, you know, such high expectations. We're, we're, we're uh, in the team that, you know, even Bernardo Silva's found himself sat on the bench for a little bit of time. Sterling, of course, did and left. And so I guess essentially it's interesting to see what his mentality is and his temperament is because there may be spells where he's in the team, spells where he's out of the team. So uh, if he has the maturity to deal with that, which it sounds like he does, you know, that's um, that's obviously really good news. Um, I mean, I mean, if you join City at this point, you know you're not going to be a starter, yeah. um, and you you need. I mean, they've talked probably a lot and uh, explained his role, so he is willing to accept this role. I would I would assume from uh, from the negotiations, of course, as well. And I'm not sure if you're fully well, Oliver, but um, it looks like the port may be out until at least October. So I've read course, from your Twitter feed, yes, yeah, yeah, and with um. 
with Nathan Ake, of course, and John Stones. You know, they're, they're, they're capable of injuries as well. There is potential game time here for him, you know, and um, like I'm hoping you've talked about him being a little bit concentration lacking. Uh, one of Otamendi's best ever seasons for Manchester City was under Guardiola and one of the, the criticisms aimed at Otamendi was he lacked concentration you know at times and he was he switched off a little bit or he was a bit reckless I'm hoping Pep you know has the the experience which he does to maybe you know smoothen out some of those deficiencies in this game uh, we don't know if that happened of course but that's what I'm hoping they see him as a potential rough diamond you know um, what about his injury record I know we talked a little bit about off air about this but you know, Dortmund, he, he hasn't had the best, but what about before he was before Dortmund? What was his injury record like? Uh, at Basel, he was very uh, injured very rarely, so I don't know where this comes from that he suddenly has so uh, a few muscular injuries. <clears throat> I do, when, I look, when I'm looking at his injury record, I don't see any huge problems. He's rarely out for more than a week or two, maybe in times he was out for, uh, for 20 or 30 days. But uh, overall, I don't think it's, it's a huge problem. He did uh, he did uh, do his dam- uh, cruciate ligaments in Basel and missed the season. But that was more or less the only injury that he's had in his time in Basel or his uh, major injury and uh, his ma- only major injury over the course of his career. So, uh, and he's recovered very well from it. He's become a better player since. So I remember when he came back actually and uh, he sat out for almost a year and he was suddenly he was a better player. I don't know. He worked a lot on his game during his recovery time. So I believe that it didn't, uh, didn't hinder his progress at all. It helped, actually. That sounds uh, really encouraging, actually. It says a lot about him as a person, you know, as, as a player. Um, and I, I'm hoping, personally, that it's just a Dortmund thing. Dortmund do have a reputation of injuries, you know, and like, uh, particularly under Marco Rose, apparently there was an awful lot of muscular injuries there with players working too hard in training and complaining about it. I, I read it once, you know, like it was a bit too much. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's just the same with Haaland and potentially Kanji as well. Um, to sum it up, Oliver, um, is this, in your opinion, is this a relatively smart signing for Man City? Is that, you know, is it, will, will, how do you think you'll get on? It is. If you take into account the reported price, if you take into account the players' experience on Champions League level, on Euro or international level, on Bundesliga level, if you take into account that Pep knows him, he's played or he's managed teams against him, that uh, Holland has played or trained with him for a year, uh, that uh, he's quite a relatively well-known defender across Europe, and if you take into account his abilities and his age, then I'd say for the reported price, that's a very smart signing because he fills in gaps that could potentially open or are already open in the case of Laporte. That's interesting. And it, it does sound, when you put it, you know, everything you've explained today, it seems to make an awful lot of sense. Lastly, um, does he speak English by any chance? Because that obviously always helps with integration. He does speak English very well. Uh, he is Perfect. from, I, I think his father is Nigerian, so uh, he does speak English fluently. That's brilliant because obviously that really helps when it comes to, mm-hmm. you know, communicating with teammates and settling and so on. Uh, so obviously as well, there was there was a report that um, uh, Harland had put in, uh, you know, a good word about him to the coaching staff because they asked his opinion and so on. And Oliver, to be honest, mate, I'm quite excited by this now. Like, it was one of those, yesterday when he came out of nowhere, it's like, I was like, what's going on here? Why are we signing another centre back? We've got loads, but I'm an idiot, so ignore me. But the more you think about it, the more you realise, like, this this is a, it seems like a quite smart signing and relatively risk free given the price, you know? Um, and it's the, when you talked about his personality, you know, and him, and, I like it when City do do their due diligence on footballers, you know, and work out that they have the right mentality and so on. He sounds like he could be a, a good fit for Manchester City. Oliver, um, thank you so much for coming on, mate. I've really, really enjoyed that, and it's been really informative. Thanks for having me. No, Enjoy my pleasure. Season. Uh, honestly, I've always wanted to chat to a football manager, genuinely researcher and scout. So uh, <laughs> mainly just to say, stop killing all our lives with your wonderful game. So like, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not my fault. Oh, here we go. Here's, a question. Did... Here's a question for you. Who's, who's who should we pay attention to from the Swiss leagues? Anyone? 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 You... Sighted, the next gen. Yeah, there is one name that stands above every uh, every other name. That's Fabian Rieder from Young Boys. He's okay. the one. He he might. He's uh, only at nineteen. He might end up being the player of the season in Switzerland. Really? What's the yeah. potential? Like one seventy, one eighty? Is they still doing out two hundred? I don't even know the answer. Yeah, we do. I cannot tell you his potential. <laughs> That's a secret because FM twenty three comes out in I think late October, early November. But 
I think if you're a Premier League club, you want to take a good look at the player. What, what was his name again? Sorry. Fabian Rieder. Okay. R-I-E-D-E-R. Okay, I'll get my, I'll, uh, I'll text City Scouts and get him on to it. I, just, I don't know anyone there. They know him already. <laughs> yeah, of course they do. You're know. right. they, they know everyone. That's one thing, isn't it, that f- fans forget, like, often like, oh, they should be looking at this guy. City know every footballer worth the salt in the world, don't they? Of course they do. They have a massive database, don't they? Yeah, uh, the database is the biggest scouting database. Or, uh, sorry, you're talking about City. Yeah, uh, oh, obviously they have. Manager, they have yeah, but, yeah, but I'm talking about they have. They have a lot of scouts around the world. I recently met one at the random game in Switzerland. So uh, yeah, they, you can see them everywhere. They yeah. have a massive scouting network. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, this idea that like, every every major club knows every young prospect coming through. Because yeah. word gets around so quickly. It's a it must. Anyway. It's an absolute must. Yeah, it must. Uh, Oliver, this has been fascinating. Thank you so, so much, mate. Uh, uh, Oliver's social links will be obviously in, in, in the description below. Go and give Oliver a follow on Twitter as well. Absolute legend. Oliver, thank you very much for talking about uh, Kanji. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers, guys, for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, do let me know down in the comments below, of course. Give this video a big old like uh, for all of his wonderful work. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We're out here. Kanji, are you excited? Let me know down in the comments. Catch you all in a bit.